ladies and gentlemen, it's Greg here again with a, a kit review of the uh, new um, Hobby Boss King Tiger Henschel turret, whatever the production turret really, July 1945, so as what it would have been like if the war had gone on a bit longer. You see the box is on the large side, so I can't get it all in the bloody frame. And I'll go right back there and then we get that light. So, you see, it's a Hobby Boss kit, 135 scale. Nice artwork on the front, I do like that. And the kit number, if I can find the kit number at the end of here, is, I'll put it on there, you can see that, 8, where we go, where we go, there we go, 84533, three. obviously there's 135 scale, and it's Hobby Boss, and there we are, you can read what it says now, Panzerkampf wagon, 182 Tiger 2, Henschel, July 1945 production, but obviously it's just called production tour, I would have thought. Essential Med 2 designs didn't, and the uh, I didn't like the the uh, Fermat didn't like the first one, so they changed it to the uh, this one. So they're both made by Henschel, um, but I don't know where they came from. Apparently, it was uh, they thought it was the Porsche design for the tank because the, the, the first few chassis were all the uh, coming out with them on. But apparently there was a, the, 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 with the rounded edge they were causing a bit of a problems, you know, with the if a shocker underneath it right under the turret ring and that was it, bang, gone. So they took them off. So they changed the turret, which made it cheaper because of less bulge on the side from my commander's cupola as well. So but typical Germans over engineered things and then it didn't work, so they went back to the uh, normal flat fronted one. That seemed to have worked a lot better. Right, so I'm getting a waffling away. And on the other side, we have a couple of colour callouts. So these are what ifs, obviously. And they get a metal barrel with this one as well, and a muzzle cover, which I think it's resin. Obviously, a lot of writing on that side. And on this side again, we have another colour, a couple of colour callouts, and the decal sheet and the P. And then where we are, we can uh, get it all in. I don't think I can get it all in without reading it all. What I'll do there, and I'll just keep moving it gradually. And then up. See how we're right out as far as the lens will go. And then we'll go up. Go back this way. Okay, so we'll go from there. You can obviously pause this at your own leisure and read if, it, uh, if my hands are still enough. Right, so there you go. And on the other end, it's just got the barcodes and things like that. So, without further ado, let's have a look what we have in the box. I've had a quick gander through it, but uh, nothing much else apart from that. Let's just move that box out of there at the moment. I'll put it over here, out of the way completely. So we've got typical, uh, it's basically Trumpeter and Hobby Boss are the same company I think, roughly. So we first have the, the instruction manual, which is a nice booklet form. And then we have the colour callouts, which is really nice, I do like this. For both all the variants. We've got uh, four variants you can choose, you can do what you want because they, weren't, they didn't exist would have done obviously that's just the uh, red oxide primer straight out so it doesn't say anything about them it just says one two three four and the first one I'm going to do I think is what on the box art cover I think I'll do that something different for a change and that says it was uh, yeah just it just says King Tiger 2 obviously there's no 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 um, battalion or anything it was attached to because it wasn't there and then obviously the usual stuff you get from Hobby Boss and uh, Trumpeter. A couple of bits and pieces of their uh, equipment advertised. Which is uh, so it's quite nice. And then we have a little news items for July 2018. We have the uh, P61C Black Widow. And the Delta Force FAV. You like those kind of things. 
one for the car enthusiasts and military together and on the other side we have sort of a anyway, what we've got to build it's telling you what a bit of information again on the top the turret the, the engine deck is slightly different as well at the back obviously the tracks individual tracks but uh, yeah, so it's all quite nice. Let me quick scan through the instructions then, as normal. There's nothing uh, any different. Perhaps it's a nice book of foam. We have a sprue map on the front. I might zoom completely out. I don't know I'm I'll have to move the camera back a little bit, I think. Let's just see if that works. Ah, it's a bit better, isn't it? Yeah, so first of all, we have the uh, sprue. sprue map, yeah. And then obviously we first start in the low hull again, and this one's actually got uh, torsion bars as well, which is quite nice. So hopefully, you could actually make it uh, movable. I suppose if the tracks are workable, then yeah, if not, then uh, no. So we're still carrying on with the uh, low hull suspension arms, they're starting to put the ply the wheels. I won't be doing that at that stage. Then you got to apply the sprocket and the uh, final drive. Which I'll we'll do, but won't be doing it at that stage. And then obviously the wheels, and then we've got the tracks, which are individual tracks. They're different, slightly different, now they're linked together. I'll show you that when we get to it. Let's have a look where we are. There we go. The tracks. And then we start in the, uh, the rear. Nothing too difficult in that. There's quite a few steps. The tracks obviously will take a longer time to do, and then obviously you'll be your. Uh, Placing the rear on the tank, and then we're starting on the upper deck with the ball mounted machine gun. The front, and we're carrying on with the other uh, machine gun as well, which goes into the um, it's quite nice detail actually. If you look at the uh, there's a bit of detail in that. Shame when it's going to be bloody hidden, but you know. And this is where the engine deck is slightly different. We have three, see the cowlings here, I think, whatever they are. These three here. There we are. Let's get a pointy stick, it'd be better one. A pen brush. These three, it's three, I think there's only two on the normal King Tiger, but there's three on this one. And you'll see with the um, this side as well, there's none of that um, like a, a triangular shape piece on there. So. That's the difference on the back deck as well. I think these are slightly different as well. But once I built it, and then we can compare the two together, King Tiger, uh, the normal King Tiger, and this one, just to compare the day, uh, the differences. Well, within the kit anyhow. And then carrying on with the upper upper hull again. Still, you know the uh, tow tow bars, tow bars, tow tow cables and things. And the PE for the uh, covers, engine covers. So far, there's nothing, and then obviously, you've got a pair of the you want putting on a bit more on the front, and then the side skirts, which we want to attach at that time, anyhow. But uh, there'll be a bit of damage, and these little things have to go in individually. And then we're starting to put the lower hull and the boat all together. And End of the uh, muck guards, uh, the muck guards at the rear, that's a big page of two pieces to put on and then a few little bits at the back again. And then we're starting with the commander's cupola, we have glass parts, or plastic clear glass, clear plastic I should say, for the man commander's cupola. Um, and then we start in the muzzle, so the gun, the gun breech and another couple of uh, machine guns there. We've got options between the two, we've got the P as well, to go on the top of the gun, the machine guns. And then we start with the gun mantlet there, okay, and then the rear hatch cover, the bottom, a few alternative parts, obviously from one version to the other, and then we are installing the gun, 
I think it gives you an option. It's got this metal barrel and a normal plastic barrel, but I think they vary in length depending on which variant you're going to make. So obviously, when you're reading the instructions, you have to make sure you're following the right one that you want to do. And then we got the gun breech again. That's quite nice. Into the turret, and then we're starting the uh, up at the turret itself, which is in one piece, which was quite nice. Apparently, uh, I say I don't really. I don't go into things like this, but I heard somebody saying that this, this on here with the change of the gun barrel was obviously slightly longer. This should have been moved farther down from the where it is there. That line should have been a bit further down, but hey, oh, it's a model for God's sake, you know. People, stupid, you know, what would what, what we do all day? Just sit there looking, oh, that's wrong, this is wrong. But they still buy the kit and build it, don't they? And then some people try and alter it and make it right. Bollocks up over here. This will be just built out of the box as it is. And then we're attaching all little bits, all the, the track hanging stuff and the uh, few vents and grab angles. And then again, installing the track onto the, uh, where we are? the track onto the hangers. More pins on that side and these, I think the little bulges on the side. Where we are? I can. I think these are something, there's two on each side, or one on each side, I think that's something to do with the optics, you know, I'm sure it is, I can't remember that, but it's probably called, but it's definitely something to do with the optics. And then they say, and put the hull and the uh, turret together, and then we have a complete build. So, that's that, so let's go on to the important parts first, let's start off with the uh, lower hull. I can't even get myself talking properly. Yeah, so let's have a look. I say I haven't taken anything out of any plastic. So what we have here is, uh, oh yeah, very nice. Is uh, totally look You can see the cast texture. That's really, really nice. And the uh, where it's being cut on the ends. Yeah, look at that texture on that's really nice I do like that and that's all over the uh, top of the hull and on the sides as well so that's really nice nicely crisp nice and crisp and it doesn't give you a date inside it just says 135 tiger and a long number but I have to say that's a good start to the kit definitely a good start look at the quality the casting of that and the cast texture that's really really nice that really is nice that's a, a good good start and then we have the uh, the controversial turret a lot of bollocks for me but it will look like a tiger it will be a tiger to me right and there again we have a little bit of cast texture again on the side, not as much as the hull, but you can see where some of the uh, things have to be going into. The track hangers, there's little indentations, but you can pick them up there. There's definitely a nice cast texture on the turret as well. And on the lid, that's really nicely moulded. They're all whinging about this piece here, this should have been farther down because to, comp to compensate for the, uh, the barrel change. But not bothering me at all. So it's another nice, you know, I'm moulded in one piece, that's really nice. I do like that. There again, that's textured again and all the little hole, all the little indentations where you put all the track hanging stuff. Which is nice. I'll put them back in the box later. Uh, and then we start off with this start off and then we have the uh, The lower hull. These are quite basic, the lower hull, but uh, it's even got the cast texture along the side of the uh, lower hull. And on the bottom, <laughs> you're not going to see, but that's quite nice, isn't it? All the uh, plate covers and escape arches. It's really got cast texture underneath. It's the first time I've seen that. And on the uh, 
on the front there, the little glacis plate with a nice um, cut marks again. They really are nice. Uh, so we'll get all these little sprues out the way first. Right, let's go over. So we have the decals there, I won't get them out of the bag, pretty plain, it's pretty basic. But I say I won't be using them, I'll put them in I'll use the stencils that I've got. And then we have a nice fret of PE, it's quite thick. Oh, that's just the cardboard behind it. So we have the, uh, the grill covers, and some other bits and bobs as well. We'll uh, see that when we get to build it. Uh, the glass, clear glass parts for the commander's cupola are quite nice. I'll leave them in the bag so they won't get scratched. I don't know what these little parts are separate. Oh, the machine guns. There's two machine guns there. Not slide moulded, unfortunately, but we'll try our best to. Uh, but nice, they've got nice detail on them. Oh, watch out, the plastic. There's a few delicate parts on there. Can't really see because of the glare. It's a shame they're not slide moulded, but there you go. And and then this is the. Uh, Rear cover, I'll take this out of the bag. This one because these are okay. There's no small part that we might lose. Oh, yeah, and then this is really nice again. We have the cast texture on the um, on the rear engine cover, that's really nice. That's gonna take off, that's gonna come up really nice with a few washes and one thing and another. That's really nicely detailed. Even the uh, centre of the uh, fans is uh, got a cast texture. That's really, really, really nice. Can't argue with that. And then we have the metal barrel, which is quite a long barrel, longer than the normal uh, King Tiger barrel. Obviously, because this would have been an up gun version, apparently. Have to read more about it. So what we have here, we have a resin, ooh, a resin muzzle cover. Which if you want to be using that, it's quite nice. I may use that, I may not. That's quite a nice touch. Very often you see them with the gun muzzles on there. Bloody camera. Yeah, that's quite nice. So I should pop that back into the bag. There we go, there we go. And then we have the gun barrel, which is really nicely, uh, oh yeah, that's really nice, yeah. How oh, it's been turned, and you can see there's quite a length, lengthy gun. I know the uh, King Tiger's gun is lengthy, but this is even longer. I'll leave that out, because I want to compare the two, so uh, it's when I get the one to the plastic one. I just want to compare the length, so. Right, let's start off with the first sprue in the main part of the uh, kit. We have here we have Commander's Cupola by the looks of it. A few pieces of the gun. Oh, first look here we have is the uh, gun barrel. Here's the option as well. Again, we have cast texture on the uh, upper hull stuff again. And on the uh, I can't really see if it's on the command, it's on the side of the cupola but not on the top. See the, the covers again, they're all uh, cast texture. And where are we going to again? There we are. Keep losing. That's got a cast texture on there as well. Onto the, for the uh, ball mounted machine gun on the, on the front. See these won't be used. That was a, on the normal King Tiger, so I won't be using those. There's some little bits and pieces, and then we have the other option, the plastic gun bar, which is slide moulded, which is quite nice. So let's just compare the two is to lengthwise. I think the metal barrel is slightly longer. Hmm. Not really. Not really. It's about the same length, but slightly different. Uh, there is a slight difference in it if you can't quite see the. Uh, 
there's a slight difference but not not a massive difference so a slight more that's quite nice so you've got one two three four five and there's no seam there doesn't seem to be a yes there's a slight seam running the full length but say we won't be using that we'll be using the uh, the metal barrel yeah so that's a, there's a few pieces obviously on here we're, we're not going to use because of the uh, the variant we're going to build there's more space for the spare box and say so we have the gun breech at the back of there as well which is quite nice it's, uh, And then we have so looks like this is uh, some delicate parts in here as well by the looks of it. We're having the form wrapped around it. So be careful with this screw. And then we have the commander's cupola out here. This is the one with the cast texture. As you can see, the cast texture. There's the final drive and then we have the for the exhaust that's got a nice cast texture on there as well. So I've got people underneath there say what's delicate. A few hug grab handles and the uh, track tech the track um, thing as well, the track cable. I can quite see that I don't really loosen it. All a little fine a bit like that, which is quite nice, you know, it's they've, they've done that. And there's the commander's cupola ring, which is quite nice. Again, it's my, you know, way to be. And there's the inside. I presume that's the uh, yeah, for the turret and then the turret ring underneath. And there's the engine hatches there, which are not much of a texture on them ones, unless that's the uh, the one for the variant. It's still nice, nicely moulded again. No flash or anything like that. There's quite a few bits in the kit, so I don't want to make the video too long. Waffling is 22 minutes long now as it is. Um, yeah, then we have uh, another hatch, and there's another rear engine. But that's, I think that's for the that's the one we'll be using. I think it's got nice cast texture on it again. And we have the side skirts, which are quite nice. So I'll be slicing them up and doing bits and pieces in the uh, on it and we have the mud guards are all nicely moulded again and then we have the rear which has got a nice cast texture on again kind of quite there we go you can see it now nice cast texture on there and then we have a few of the pioneer tills there which is quite nice looking um yeah they're quite nice bit delicate so be careful with those We have to be very careful with them as we put them back. We don't want to be damaging anything before we even start. So there we have. This looks like what we'll be using, I think, for the uh, the gun. The mantlet on the front and the lower hull. Yep, that looks like the lower hull. It's good, good, nice detail on the lower, all the bolts. Again. And then we have the mantle on the front. We've got that cast texture on the front of the, uh, the mantle again. You can see that. And there's a few hatches, gun parts, covers, uh, covers for the uh, exhaust. Exhaust the uh, to let all the crap out of the tank. They're all nicely moulded again. Really crispy moulded. They really are nice. Rear engine, uh, rear uh, turret hatch. Lovely moulding again. This cast texture is really, really nice. Really nice. And then that part we have. I'm not too sure what that part is. We have a bit of detail on some of the hatches in the uh, inside. And like I say, I've not seen any pin marks that we shouldn't have anywhere. If what if there is, it'll be hidden away anyhow. But uh, yeah, another nice, uh, another nice screw sticking to the plastic today. So quite a few to go in, yeah. um, and then we have part of the uh, few small parts in here again. We have another gun mantlet, another cupola, which I say we probably won't be using, and more muck guards. And then we have the uh, sprocket, which is quite nicely detailed again. But there again, we'll be using this one. 
Has it got the 18 teeth? Well, yeah, it looks like it has. 18, I think it is, instead of 9, or whatever it was. So there's another two hatches as well with the same cast texture and more uh, muck guards, obviously, for the other. Uh, the normal, the normal King Tiger. And then we have, here's another one with sprockets and things in, so God knows which one we'll be using. I say we'll have to make sure we follow the right ones on the uh, instructions. So you have two here, which is the same. Why won't you come out? Go off on something. There we go. There's two identical here, but there again we have more sprockets. This is only got the nine, I think, is it one? One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, it's only got the nine, so that's for the normal variant I would have thought. There's the exhaust, which is one piece, is it? Apart from the uh, the bottom part, which is quite nice, and it's it's hollowed out to a certain degree, but I think I'll take it a bit farther in. Not too much. There you go. We have the uh, return idle, which is quite nicely detailed again, and it's got that uh, slight cast texture in the centre again. Yeah, but there again, I don't think we'll be using that one. We'll be only using a couple of parts of each screw, as you know, things like that happen nowadays. And then we have one, two, three, four. There's two in each bag, and they're are they separate or different? No, they're the same. And this is all the lot, the running gear, obviously the wheels and the torsion bars, things like that. Nicely moulded again. No flash. See the wheels again, they're really nice. Again, they're quite nice. There's the torsion bars at the top, and then we have the suspension arms. And the reverse. Also, got some of the wheels with not much detail because you're not going to see that. The uh, torsion bars look quite nice and firm. Obviously, with the caps, oh, caps in the centre. Only some of the wheels, some little tiny pieces, grab handles, and this, that, and the other. Like I say, all nicely moulded again. All really nicely moulded. So I think that's the end of the actual plastic, apart from the tracks. Yeah, it is. So we have one big bag of tracks. So it's not all. We have three bags of tracks. And they're all identical. We'll have a quick look, see if there's any. The main thing is also might as well use a kit one because they have a daft injection mark on them. Let's have a quick look. Oh, and luckily these ones haven't and they're quite nicely moulded as well. No injection marks. Quite nice. There's no injection marks on them anywhere that I can see. And then the uh, inside. And see these parts, the smaller part here has got the guide horns on. Apparently, but what, what, what I was looking at, that they join the tracks together with uh, this part in the centre. So as you're going along, you must drop them in somewhere. As it's, uh, yeah, because you've got two. Yeah. Once I get to it, I'll have to explain it better. But I think they ask you what join it. See how oh, they got the uh, flap out like a hook part of the. Uh, that must hook onto the track somehow. Onto the. Uh, these parts here. I would have thought. See the little hook into there. I don't know if they'll clip in or I'll have to be glued in. If they're glued in, then there's no point in having workable suspension. But we'll see when we get to them. We'll see when we get to them. But they yeah, are nicely moulded. Different unusual colour, but, uh, but nice. So we have one, two, three, six, nine sprues of those. So it's quite a bit of work to be done on this kit. I think I won't be doing this one straight away. I think I'll be doing the, uh, a Sherman. I think by the time I did a Sherman, I've never been to a Sherman, so I'll probably do a Sherman, which I picked up off eBay for eighteen pound. I'll show you that in the next. Um, Kit review. So that was the uh, review of the uh, Hobby Boss King Tiger 
uh, Hen of Hensel, well, production turret, 1945 production, as if it would have been. Uh, this would have came to fruition and the war went on a bit longer. So, apparently, they found a few of these hulls, I think, or whatever. So, they were in production or would have been in production until uh, the war ended. So I've waffled on a bit now, so I'd like to say thank you very much for taking the time out of your day to watch. I hope you found it interesting. I say it's an unusual, not an unusual kit, but slightly different variation of the King Tiger and the E75-100. Sort of between the two, isn't it, really? But uh, yeah, an interesting build, and I think I'll probably do that uh, unusual camouflage pattern instead of the usual tri, you know, the tri uh, camo. So I'd like to say thank you very much to all my subscribers, old and new. I seem to be flying at the moment. It's less than a month I've picked up a hundred already. I was at 250 in July, beginning of July, and now I'm about 360. So I've basically picked up 110 within four weeks. So I must be doing something right. So I hope it carries on. So I want to say thank you very much. Uh, some news on the, the draw for the 250, uh, the winner hasn't contacted me um, for the kit, so I'll give him another week, and if there's no contact for another week, then I'll have to redraw it. Um, so if you want to, just when you do a comment, or if you comment on this kit, just, just say I want to be in it, and then we'll go fresh again, we'll start again. So I can't promise he's not going to contact me within a week, but if he doesn't, then we'll redraw it. So just leave a comment and then say, yes, please, I'd like to be into the, uh, the giveaway. And that'll be fine, then we can go from there. So I think that's about it at the moment. So thank you very much, and we'll see you soon with the uh, Tamiya 135 Enigma. So we'll catch you soon.